Those of you who were yesterday are well aware one of the areas of, of, of real, of real uh, deep research for us over the course of this time has been uh, looking at artificial intelligence at urban scale uh, and how the, the, once more, the models and simulations that can be derived uh, from those systems uh, can be understood not only as, uh, uh, as tools for describing urban systems, but also uh, acting back upon them. Uh, and in particular, ways in which uh, uh, what we think of as artificial intelligence may also be a kind of augmented intelligence or even an alien intelligence. That is, how they see the world, sense the world, categorize the world, and do more than just automate our common sense, but would introduce understandings and perspectives, uh, possibilities, epistemologies, that we would otherwise uh, not be able to realize and not be able to instrumentalize um, at any kind of, uh, at, at, at urban scale. Likewise, uh, the question of, of the this interest in, des in the agency of tools and how to design the frame by which design, uh, by which design ensues uh, has animated, as a, as a question has uh, animated this, this discourse and discussion from the very beginning. So if, if Darcy Thompson's uh, aphorism that form is a diagram of forces uh, held for a while, what we are seeing now, perhaps in just greater, to greater or lesser degree, is how urban form becomes a diagram of formats. And the restrictions, uh, the restrictions of the format, of the file format, or of the building information, uh, modeling systems, um, becomes a means by which a particular descriptive system, a particular categorical system, takes on an outsized agency in determining in advance what it's possible, uh, what it's possible to, to uh, design subsequently. And, 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 and indeed, how what is designed uh, uh, interacts with, uh, with the rest of the world and how this together constitutes ultimately the habitats and environments in which we, in which we find ourselves. And so the simulation systems that, that, and the, the, plat the, the, uh, the, the platform and tools that Atoll uh, will propose are ones that seek to sort of enter right into the, the thick of these, uh, to, to the thick of these questions to deal with uh, uh, AI, uh, b both in terms of its capacity to instrumentalize our intentions, uh, but also to be a kind of adversary uh, for, our, for our common sense. Hopefully in such a way in which that uh, the result is cities that are uh, more unexpected, more heterogeneous, um, a bit more alien than we would have uh, come up with ourselves. So it's my pleasure to welcome Atoll. Hello, uh, my name is Tom Pearson and I'm an artist from London. Hi, my name is Natalia Mijetska and I'm a wayfinding and graphic designer from Moscow, Russia. Uh, I'm Artyom Kanevskich, a data scientist from Troitsk, Moscow. And I'm Leo Stuckert, I'm an architect currently based in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And together we are Atoll. There is a древнее высказывание о том, что к 2050 году 75% всего населения Земли будет жить в городах. Город намного старше нас. Он переживет тебя и переживет меня. Город — это миллион островов, плывущих сквозь пространство, несущих с собой информацию о культуре, политике, рабочих и неисправных системах и коллективном опыте. Наши города превращаются в хитросплетение взаимодействующих программ, Тысячи систем и миллионы пользователей обмениваются данными друг с другом. И все же мы продолжаем формировать городскую инфраструктуру, не беря в расчет сложность этих взаимосвязей. Строить новые умные города из песка. Этот город – остров. So Atoll is an urban design and governance platform. It's driven by deep learning. It's a simulation space for simulation spaces. Driverless cars are learning to navigate our environments within virtual cities and building and even city information models are indexing our components of our physical environment within large and vast digital databases. Simulation within cities is creating a new paradigm which places the modeling of systems 
So emulating behavior and characteristics rather than form at center stage. And yet, the urban environment is not composed of digital infrastructure alone. Within our public squares and the places we live and work, cities have accumulated protocols, civic intelligence, and common practices over centuries. Technological progress, sensor networks, and cloud computing has heralded the age of the smart city. Google and its urban design branch, Sidework Labs, um, um, are proclaiming the fourth in the, uh, industrial revolution of cities. And the use of simulations allows us to speed run new systems on system and city scale, since these new technologies need to be integrated at this macro scale to work. However, translating current urban categorizations into digital models further entrenches pre-existing partial and biased views. Subjective to interests of stakeholders, current models are creating pockets within cities which are bounded and proprietary and cross-hatched into a dense urban environment. So how can such simulations take a truly neutral stance? In? So models are subjective and they can never truly represent the complexities of cities but it is becoming difficult to distinguish between the model and reality. Technological norms become social norms. In a similar way to how the design of a building can be traced back to the software or the tool that it was conceived in, algorithms have a strong cultural character and the same goes for simulations. So we require new tools, new taxonomies and new ways of constructing models and simulations. A new exploration of a model's parameter space. And we require a space to build, code, run, and finally validate those simulations. When thinking about designing cities through simulations, we must take into account that a simulation by its complex nature is a cross-disciplinary activity. Through using Atoll, can we move away from smart city imaginaries of betterness through optimization and efficiency, and towards an urbanism of multiple perceptions towards adaptivity through diversity and towards spatial discontinuities. So, Tom will introduce you now to the framework of the Atoll platform. So, the Atoll platform consists of three main components. Thank you, Leah. I just let, let it load. Um, there is a simulation space, a design toolbox, and a planning framework. So, the first of those tools is MIM, and I'll take you through that. So MIM is an evolution of building and city information modeling systems. Um, MIM is able to aggregate and manage profiles of multiple urban simulations, absorbing sort of pre-existing partial models of the city. But also, MIM is able to create new urban categorizations. It integrates um, models and data from BIM, geospatial information systems and other static models that exist in the city like digital terrain models and combines it with dynamic data. So sort of patterns of behavior for mobile phone operators, urban sensor networks, financial markets and other platforms. And all this data can be added to as the system and data in the city evolves. Then through leveraging the power of machine learning, the, um, the data be, can be compressed and Atoll creates new urban information models based on a new categorical logic. So these models are not informed by traditional techniques, but by allowing a discriminative algorithm to define a new alien language for the city. So discriminative algorithm try to classify unstructured input data. They map features to labels, and therefore MIM is able to spot new correlations and mappings of clusters within the city. Existing urban definitions are failing to address the complex interplays of the city and and its temporalities. And MIM is able to spot patterns and idiosyncrasies that might not be obvious using traditional modeling techniques. By weighting the inputs differently, we can create new correlations and fields, distilled understandings of the urban space that aren't necessarily readable without machines, and create an endless space of possible versions and understandings of the city. And these profiles can be passed onto Array, which is the second tool in the simulation space. So Array is based on the architecture of GANs generative adversarial networks, um, which are a form of deep learning. So they use two neural networks against each other to learn to mimic various distributions of data. 
Through the use of two neural networks contesting one another, GANs can generate new things, whether that's faces, images of cats, or new models for simulations. And these are all things that have never previously existed. By training Array on the profiles of different clusters within the city, it's able to mimic the existing aspects of the urban space whilst retaining its real core characteristics. And so by training these simulations, it becomes a way in which you can make the city. Once these profiles have been synthesized by Array, the reverse process can take place, with the data being decompressed from the profiles to create an endless array of new models. And these models retain some of the characteristics, behaviors, and functions of the original, simulating environments, flows, and other urban configurations. So at the core of the atoll lays the claim for new urban categorizations, new taxonomies, a new dictionary for the urban space, cross-referencing large amounts of high-dimensional data, defining new patterns and continuities, and synthesizing new models for simulation, which can be then using a series of design tools, which I'm going to pass over to Leo to explain. So Atoll Design at launch will be composed out of three tools. The first one, Atoll Instance, allows you to modify the city. So picking one particular char characteristic, like the taxation zone or the layout of an urban block, modifying that and then propagating it through the in throughout this entire array space. So even if the scenario that you test is the same, it's possible that the, through modifying the interpretation of starting conditions, you would get an infinite array of possible ways that this can play out. That can have effects. In some of these examples, it could show effects uh, that are in close physical proximity. Maybe in others, it would show in, uh, somewhere on the other side of the planet. The second tool, Atoll Snippet, generates. So similar to how Tom was um, explaining the principles of GANs, it allows you to take a zone of a city delete it and then have it be synthesized either by behaviors and patterns from the same city or by other model oh. or by cities uh, from other models that, uh, that our platform has been trained on. Finally, the last tool, Echo, uh, Echo is a tool to train space, uh, a training space to train AI services. So models like Uber could use it to evolve their artificial intelligences within the, our platform and test, uh, test how that plays out in different temporalities. So training it within seconds or centuries. Yeah. And so Atoll can generate new terminologies and readings of the city, but the most important for part for us is that it can be more than that. For us, um, it's an outward facing platform for simulation socializing. It's a collaborative planning and governance arena for the urban space which acknowledges that simulation needs to be a cross-disciplinary action and activity. It prioritizes multiple perspectives of the urban space by allowing anyone to create and define a model of their reality for consideration. And as the platform evolves, multiple models of the city begin to exist in the same space and at the same time, and fields of correlations between models are created. This can be used as a way of governing urban space in a discontiguous manner, creating a heterogeneous reading. And the Atoll platform becomes a simulation space for the simulation of multiple urban simulations. So these models and clusters, they, the models and clusters of the city can each be seen as part of a larger competing network, analogous to the nesting of multiple generative adversarial networks. And as Atolls generate alternative models of different actors at different scales, they can each combine and learn from each other, feeding back and uh, these, the, the, the feedback can be propagated back through the other simulations. And so we're not inventing macro scale simulations, but recombining and we're combining and recombining pre-existing models and the nesting of new logics into a primordial soup, a space for the simulation of multiple versions of the city with and against each other, moving away from perhaps flawed visions of smart city imaginaries, reflecting back their abstraction and learning from the variety of urban space through new taxonomies and new ways of constructing models and simulation and attempting to reverse current assumptions. Thank you.